We did just see Ecop take the first spot in the final in a pretty convincing fashion overall. And the next match we've got coming up is going to be 6 0 versus Oskaka. But we do have the bracket just to remind anyone who's either just tuning in or forgot about the games early today. It has been a fairly lengthy day with a, a lengthy day with a lot of Hearthstone games being played. We see Ecop moving his way through at the top of the bracket there, beating out Vince and Fire as we just saw. And then we see 6 0 beating out Ness at the bottom of the bracket and Oskaka beating out yourself, Jackie. Um, so, too bad. Sorry, right. sorry about that. Unlucky. <laughs> Unlucky, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, the, you know, these guys have come at quite a long way, quite a long time. Some of them through Swiss, some of them uh, qualified in the pro qualifier, of course. But it's going to be 6 0 versus Oskaka. Teammates, um, who do you think has the edge here if you'd have to go for it? Uh, I talked a lot with Oskaka, and like honestly, he doesn't even really know what to feel. Like 6-0 has a weird lineup. Like you don't really expect to play against that coming in. He has Rogue Paladin, no Warrior. He's the only player out of the six. But everyone's like, oh my god, what do I ban? Well, it's, it's no a Warrior. Thing, it's a good thing. Like when your opponent doesn't have the clash you're, you're planning to ban, that's just strictly good. It's like it's already banned out of the series, so you kind of have even more flexibility in what you ban. Um, I mean, Oskaka feels good about his chances from what I understood, and I, I didn't really get a chance to talk to Sixo, but I think I would mostly agree with Oskaka. His Freeze Mage is going to be really good in this series, so if uh, if the draws are there, I think that's going to put in a lot of work against what Sixo has, but uh, I think Sixo's real chance kind of just lies in Druid. That's basically his best deck against Oskaka. Pretty much what most players have been uh, doing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and in LHS, I mean, the sweet potential is always there. Talking about Druid, like Oskaka is not some, not playing a usual lineup as well, right? His heavyweight Druid is something that uh, I think only he is playing in current yeah. in the tournament, uh, right? His teammate Hoy uh, played it on ladder, first, right? A lot, on ladder, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hit top ten legend, and I mean the list was. As, as, as Oskaka will say, not that great. Uh, mm -hmm. I had like bog creepers and stuff. It was kind of meme-y. Oh, well, but, uh, we're talking about that. Yeah. Those bog creepers actually have merit. Yeah, uh, it's for your charge, basically. Yeah, only. exactly, yeah. right? And so it'll pull it out as a taunt, whereas the Ancient War is just a 5-5. Five, five, or a 1-1. One, one. When, when you play it from <laughs> your hand, Ancient War is pretty significantly better. Um, but I, I mean, Oskaka just thinks that deck is good. Uh, a lot of players have like questioned it. They've been like, you know, do you actually think it's good? Did you just bring it yeah, out of fun? Just, yeah, exactly. And, he thinks it's just one of the best druids. And, and that's the thing as well, because it's always risky when you sort of discover a deck that you think, you know, starts performing really well, uh, but like a week before a major tournament, you know, yeah. it's like, do I take it or do I well, just take token druid that we all know is good and everyone's been, you know, performing quite well with that deck overall. We've seen a lot of 3-0 sweeps or just at least taking two wins in the last hero standing format with that deck. So pretty brave to decision from Oskaka, but he's making it work so far. When it comes to the Druid, I think it's uh, the main question, which Druid you choose, is just basically uh, you have to ask yourself, what do I play in the mirror match? Would I rather play the token against token Druid, or would I rather play my version of the heavyweight Druid against the token, right? I feel this is something that you will uh, have a lot in, uh, in the matches, because everyone is bringing Druid, right? Everyone yeah. is playing that deck, so there's a huge chance you will actually have a lot of mirror matches. And mirror matches, I mean, just saying Druid versus Druid, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a really strange one. And we can just see now the bands up on the screen. We can see the Shamans banned out for both players. So the Warrior is going to stay up for Oskaka. Uh, what sort of impact do you think? Like, obviously Oskaka is playing like a, sort of not the most common Warrior deck knocking around, but do you think that's going to be good for him or bad for him that he actually does get to play Warrior this game? I mean, uh, Sixo is coming in with the plan to never ban Warrior. Uh, he's bringing Rogue, Paladin. Those are pretty strong against Warrior, uh, especially the Paladin. And it's Cycle Cthune, which going to run into trouble against Paladin. It's not that great against Druid, but it actually has a decent matchup against Rogue, I think, and the match against Druid is not that bad, but Warrior is definitely Oskaka's weakest class in this yeah. series. Which Especially is like, since it's not running Brawls. Yeah, I mean, it's strange to say Warrior is the player's weakest yeah. class, but... <laughs> it's whenever, about lineups, right? Whenever that class gets left up, it's because your opponent thinks they're going to beat it. Yeah, so do you, I think like you know we've discussed it a lot over the weekend is sort of the key deck that you need to get a win with in a lineup in the last hero standing to stand a chance. So do you think that's the deck for Oskaka? Like if he can get a win with the Warrior, he's going to look good for the whole series. Or do you think this it, just it all has to go well with uh, the way it's lined up versus Sixo? Well, I recommended Oskaka lead with Warrior because so I. That, so now you get to see. Yeah, and <laughs> he did, and Sixo led with Paladin, which is what I said probably wouldn't happen. <laughs> So oh, no, oh so now I feel kind of bad. Okay, so uh, I, 
So the game has started, and now, so Oskaka's win is going to be on the line. So it's going to be all, oh, either all track's fault, regardless. Yeah, I mean, I am going to leave you guys to it. Yeah. So enjoy the game. Have Thanks, Raven. I mean, this, <laughs> this is kind of unfortunate, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's like the, it's the exact circumstance you're trying to avoid when you lead warrior and leading, your your lead deck in LHS is always a risk. There's <laughs> no. If you have a 100% safe lead, chances are you're just going to win the series. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. It's always a risk. And Oskaka took a risk that Sixo wouldn't lead Paladin. Uh, the logic being that Sixo really wants to have the Paladin to beat Warrior. So if he risks it and leads with it and hits like Druid and loses that, suddenly Oskaka's Warrior is not looking too bad. Well, the Paladin is not really like a re super bad matchup against the Druid, right? With the equality. Yeah, it, it's just that against Warrior, it's so dominant mm -hmm. uh, compared mm -hmm. to Sixo's other decks that it makes sense to save it. But uh, yeah, Ascox is definitely the, the underdog in this matchup. So let's discuss how this match looks in a vacuum, right? Uh, Paladin's plan is just to sustain to, uh, to the end game and then just finish up with anything can happen, right? It has no wi auto win condition that can happen mid game, an example, against the Warrior in special, yeah. which is a uh, deck that thrives on durability, right? So, uh, and when it comes to the Warrior, now that he knows he's playing against a uh, end game deck, what, what would you recommend to do in this situation? Uh, Askaka is basically just going to be trying to play really fast. He's the aggressor in this matchup. Obviously, mm -hmm. against anything can happen. If you try and play a control style game, they're just going to kill you with yeah. anything. So he's the aggressor. Uh, he's going to be trying to cycle really fast, trying to push damage. Um, you might see Cthulhu come out as early as just turn 10 to try and get it in, in the graveyard just to doom call her back yeah, on his deck. Exactly. Um, but there are, there are kind of two ways that, um, that Warrior can go about this matchup, in my opinion. The first is when you're on coin and you can you know, sustain it. You can save the coin, uh, Emperor, to reduce both your brand and your Cthulhu and go for a brand coin Cthulhu mm -hmm. just for a big Cthulhu turn. Which can also be an OTK. Right? Yeah. If you can buff your Cthulhu to uh, 14, which is what the buffers will do, then that's 28 damage, which is basically an OTK. Uh, Oskak has already foregone doing that. He decided that pointing out Ghoul was uh, was better. So now I think his real plan, normally with this deck, you go for the brand Doomcaller. But honestly, it's kind of better to have two big Cthulhu's than three small ones mm -hmm. against Paladin because they have so much healing. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him just play Bran uh, with a Cthulhu activator just to get extra power on the Cthulhu rather than saving it for a super combo with the Doomcaller. Especially since you have the Doomcaller in the deck, right? So that's another chance to just spawn Alcon Missiles. Because that's, that's it, right? Most, in most situations, Paladin will have an answer to the Cthulhu, so just play the Cthulhu as a damage. Yeah. Right? I mean, the battle cry, I Sixo's got Keeper of Uldaman, he's got Aldor Peacekeeper, he's got Equality. Mm -hmm. uh, chances are your Cthulhu's not just sticking around as, as a 10-10 or whatever, so... It, it, it can also have uh, Humility, right? There's one Humility in the deck, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, I, I'm not too sure about his list, I haven't been keeping track, but... I mean, there's also Ivory Knight, which can pull Humility if he doesn't even have it in the deck, but... Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we have to remember is that even if Cartoon is um, reduced to 3-3 by Keeper of Ulduman or by Peacekeeper to one attack, it can still be buffed yeah. while it's on the board. So that's, that's, that's some form of additional damage, but of course it's not as impactful as it would have been uh, well otherwise, right? Yeah, and Askaka chose to armor even though he has Battle Rage in his hand. It's going to end up working out because uh, Sixo played out minions that are going to damage him anyway, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Askaka just thinking that's probably going to happen, I don't really need to not armor up. So next turn for Skaka will be most likely Bran and Disciple of Katun, since you want to have double activator from the um, Disciple to get that big Katun going, and you want to activate the Emperor on turn 7 as well. Yeah. And that is possible by playing And you have the Bran out as well, so it's a huge yeah, threat. Exactly. So you would have... Uh, basically, you test if your opponent has a Truce of the Champion. If there's no Truce mm. of the Champion, other possibilities are Pyromancer with two spells, one of them has to be Consecration, an example. Right. right? Uh, other possibilities will be another Charger with a Wall Eater. But if you see one happening already, right, then the chances are slim for that to happen. Yeah, the other thing is, uh, since Sixo's likely play on turn six could be Ivory Knight, and that is what he has in his hand, uh, there are just some Ivory Knight spells that you don't normally see, like Vending Wrath, uh, Holy Wrath, things of that nature could kill your brand. So. 
Oscock is going to hold out for this brand value. Um, Disciple was like the cleanest way mm -hmm. to but get through this. The best but move? I mean, we can see the brand Disciple of Cthulhu would have lined up really well in the, mm -hmm. in the 4 4 that got played. So This is like the difference between being um, oh. efficient okay. <laughs> in the turn, well. right? But the big picture was to just activate the turn 7, which would be very dominant, yeah. right? while still presenting a threat on the board in turn 6. Because your brand is something really to be like feared, right? Now, yeah, I mean, you basically just have to go for this. It's it's so good. Yeah, you it's have the good. option to Blood Daker instead, but like I said, he's the aggressor. He can make these plays. I mean, it's not long-term going to be great for him, but like you said, he's forcing the removal here uh, mm -hmm. on the brand, which I think is it? not going to remove because, exactly. yeah, worst case, your opponent plays the Twin Emperor, and then you and can... And then you're a quality yeah, power master, right? So it's not a big deal if you just get to six damage. Uh, but the problem is you don't have heal in your hand yet uh, in form of Obedient Healing, which is the best one, mm -hmm. right? Lay on hands is unfortunately not... Well, you have three, six, seven, eight, nine cards in hand. Yeah, he has too many cards right now. So exactly. unless he unloads cards this turn, you can't lay on hands Burlux. isn't going to be very viable next turn. Exactly. So it's, a, it's an awkward turn. I would say maybe he will even go just for the Acolyte of Pain and Peacekeeper, but he goes for the clear. So yeah. he's not greedy well, at all. Yeah, here's the thing, is I honestly think had Sixo not gone for this, Oskaka wouldn't have played Twin Emperor. Mm -hmm. um, I think he would have like Blood Dickered his guy, maybe Battle Raged, just gone for cards because Brand being on the board is already a threat. Sixo yeah. has to answer that at some mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. or else turn 10 is going to roll around and Kathuna is just going to kill Sixo. So you it, think maybe the consideration was to kill the Brand right now because of the fact that a single shield bearer adds 20 armor? I mean, with two Anyfins in his hand, he has two Murlocs in the grave, so mm -hmm. overall, I mean, it's it's not quite there yet, but if he draws, like, another Bluegill, suddenly you're reaching the point where just Anyfin and Anyfin could just be lethal. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something you can be thinking about, is the 20 armor maybe putting a stop to that, uh, kind of trying to make a swing in the game, but I think really Sixo just thought... Okay, he's probably not going to extend much more. I'm just going to take six damage, and chip damage is pretty relevant um, because it makes the Cthulhu so much more of a threat. Yeah. Uh, okay. This deck doesn't actually OTK you, so it's important to get them a little low. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, Sixo basically just cleared up room in his hand to play lay on hands the next turn. Correct. But it's still. I think it doesn't look like a turn for Leon Hands because Peacekeeper just gives yeah. you so much value with the Acolyte of Pain on board. So this is important for Sixo and Forbidden Healing in hand as well. Well, this looks amazing, actually. So now he has bigger threats than Oskaka on board. Yeah, but this is going to be a really good turn for Oskaka. He's going to be able to Battle Rage for three. Um, decides not to... He could have executed the Acolyte, but I guess, you know, with so many cards already in Sixo's hand, it's not mm -hmm. really on Oskaka's radar. Um, but Sixo's already used three of the answers to Cthulhu out of, I believe, five in his deck. We have two Peacekeepers, right? So yeah. Um, two Keeper of Uldumans, two Equalities. Are there two Keeper of Uldumans? I think there are. Maybe. Let's assume there are two, right? Sure. Then it's so, six. So, uh, s still, one Equality was used. And uh, there's only one in hand. Yeah. It's right? so one one answer. And if Oskaka goes with the Emperor behind the Tones, I feel like this is this is the turn when you probably should clean again. And then the every other threat is basically not contested by by Paladin. Yeah. So it looks like Oskaka is probably just rushing to the Cthulhu, just mm -hmm. going to jam it next turn. Uh, and then worry about cycling to the Doomcaller rather than trying to cycle now and then Emperor. Uh, he's already used Bran. Like, Emperor is not valuable uh, now. Yeah. So just using it to get the Cthulhu online one turn earlier, I assume that's probably what we're going to see. And Oscar, or Sixo doesn't have an answer to that right now. He actually just... Mm -hmm. He has a quality, but he has no activator. Unfortunately for him. So the game could end really quick, honestly. Like, it could end right now. If I that's imagine 12 Sixo's, damage, right? Yeah, it, it's a 12-12 which is almost certainly going to hit the Tyrion twice, then you can execute if it didn't die. Um, is there any other option? Just not play Cthulhu. Let's say you play Commanding Shout this turn. You have Acolyte of Pain, 
to combo that with the Pyromancer, so we'll draw at least. He can draw cards. a lot of cards. Yeah, but hmm, I mean, it feels like it's probably good to just play Katoon this time. Yeah, right? I mean, we obviously can see that this is like the best turn to play it because Sixo has nothing. Um, when you do this, you have to be very wary about how many cards you're drawing. Two from Acolyte of Pen. You don't plan to play <laughs> Battle well, you Rage. You definitely can't play Battle Rage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not, not a good choice. But still, he's actually pushing for six damage this yeah, time, right? Yeah, th and this board has to be answered. It, it's mm -hmm. kind of the same deal over again. Wow, he's going for Blood to Icarus as what? well? Yeah, he's going to save his Execute. Um, Interesting. Because now yeah. he's damaging like... Now he's just in range of Consecration alone, clearing yeah, the entire exactly. board. This is kind of awkward. So I'm not sure I loved that. Um, there was an option to be not in the range of Consecration, right? Without a Pyromancer. Because, um, yeah, he didn't have to slam and Icker. Oh, well, there's Consecration. Here we go. Uh, he could have there, just played nothing else Commanding here. Shout and Execute. And that's it. Yeah, I mean, he definitely had options to not have his entire board die to Consecration. Um, when he committed to the Pyromancer Commanding Shout with the Acolyte, then you're kind of committing to doing that. I, I think he didn't need to play the commanding shot with the pyro out. Mm -hmm. Because he ended up playing three spells. Well, he could have just played after. You just need to play two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that leaves your emperor at a 5 3, which mm -hmm. is very a relevant. Difference. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Because now you would have, uh, you would have he, had a 5 1 and a 2 1. Yeah. And it would suddenly be a situation where maybe your opponent dies. Um, Interesting. They'd have to kill your your Emperor, and then they would go... I mean, basically, Sixo would have had to use the Equality, almost, it looks like. Sixo is the aggressor as well right now with the weapon, 15 damage to the yep. face. By the way, another question. Why do you keep the Execute for then? I mean, it's going to be good against Doomsayer, but... <laughs> Wouldn't it be better to just kill the Terrian then? Uh, <laughs> I mean... Sometimes you get in a spot where you get a little too fancy trying to save tools like Execute, but the fact that he was also drawing so many cards makes it even more likely he draws the second Execute like he mm -hmm. just did. Um, uh, it's probably okay. Cthulhu this turn. Now well, let's see what will color. happen, right? Because uh, Sure, I mean, that's basically all we can do at this point. Um, again, Sixo has no answer to Cthulhu right now. Unless he wants to equality attack into it. Which would kill him. Well, he will he will heal for two with with true silver, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then die to the board. So needs to pull something here. That's not it, and that's just game. <laughs> so you can see how Oskaka. Wait, 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 is there no? Even if he. Uh, uh, well, he can just heal, right? Yes, yeah. he can heal, he, he but can he cannot heal. clear this turn unless yeah. he will attack with with the weapon. Too. But, I mean, I guess so. Oskaka has axe in his deck. He could heal some more. He can. Uh, that's uh, additional four. Right now, Axe kills him, and that's it, because uh, the Doomcaller won't kill him quite. Use one Axe. Use one Axe, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I think you... Uh, <laughs> it's an you know? interesting game. That, that's yeah, what I'm going to say. Yep, so he's going to heal. He should survive no matter what now, I think. Okay, so how much damage does he have next turn? Because he can play anything can happen. He has a war leader. Oh, look at that. And one bluegill. <laughs> and one bluegill. So bluegill is six damage, it's eleven damage, he's two off. And so he doesn't he didn't have lethal. Um He doesn't no. have lethal next turn. Yeah, he, he's he's had no real opportunity to push for a lethal this game. 18 damage for Ostkaka this turn, 21 with the weapon, 4 short, no way of getting in that additional 4 damage. Well, I guess you can play the just shield bearer, right? Yeah, I, I mean, you probably armor. want to. Uh, 12 armor, right? Next turn you have to expect to get a quality cleared. That That's the only way Sixo wins. Um, so, okay. so you're just going to go for the armor. Oh, that's really good. That's, That's just extra two damage, mm -hmm. so which is huge because if yeah. this board gets quality cleared, uh, Oskaka is kind of out of damage besides the axe. But now the axe is just representing lethal on board. Yeah, that was a very good pickup. The Crocolisk actually did something. Yeah, and that is all the Cthune buffers. Cthune is at his max power. Uh, I'm pretty sure now there's nothing there. He can't live. 
no charger, and, yep. and so he can't really play equality and yeah. attack. Okay, so this game went completely oppo in the opposite way that we predicted it in the beginning. Well, yeah, right? I mean, it's not like it's not like a, a home run matchup where it's like Freeze versus Warrior, but mm -hmm. it's it's definitely in the Paladin's favor, probably like around 60-40, um, maybe higher, but. Yeah, I mean, Oskaka had a really nice draw, just kind of curved out perfectly, uh, hit a brand Disciple of Cthune on a 4-4 exactly, hit all <laughs> of his Cthune buffs. Well, that Disciple on turn 6, when it was drawn from the top of the deck, was actually a huge difference. Yeah, right? that sort of, you know, made the game go the way it did. Because mm -hmm. uh, if he didn't draw that, I mean, the, the Twin Emperor is inactive. Exactly. You don't really have anything to use your brand with, which doesn't make Sixo waste the equality. Mm -hmm. and, and then the Cthune loses four damage. Yeah. So that's also a lot, because in, in retrospect, it's actually twice that, because you, he attacked Yeah, he attacked, right? yep. So Sixo is going to choose to queue up Rogue uh, as his pick. I mean, hmm. let's see. Rogue against this warrior. Uh, so he's aware that there are no brawls in this deck, so every yeah. single concealed minion is basically un indestructible unless well, we are Pyromancer yeah, with Pyre Command Shout. Pyromancer Shell. with uh, Commanding Shout, and like if the cards are reduced by Emperor, it's actually very possible to mm -hmm. uh, do four damage of Whirlwinds. Are you a fan of Barnes and Rogue decks? Uh, I'm, I wasn't playing it this weekend, but... Honestly, like the more the more I think about it, and I've like talked with some other players about it, mm -hmm. it it's pretty just good on average. Yep. Um, Sixo kept Better. it, planning to coin out a four into a four. We'll have to see which one he goes with first. Um, oh. Just gonna go with the viscerate, save the coin for for uh, um, yeah for yeah for the for auction. Right? Doesn't want to give a draw to Acolyte of Pain. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you see an adviserate. To Acolyte of Pain, you probably will follow up with, again with the yeah, same card, right? Yeah, <laughs> Because it's, yeah, yeah, it's so just, awkward for your opponent to deal and, with. And right? even as Blood Acre this time, so it gets a guaranteed draw, guaranteed another. And you play around the backstep for free damage on Acolyte of Pain as well, the second one, would have to be. So, there is preparation, so Auctioneer get pretty big. So, let's say, because of the fact that you have already a coin and you have a prep, you want to play the Tomb Pillager because if you top deck a, uh, a Conceal, you can just immediately go off. Yeah, I mean, you could. Um, not sure really when he's going to want to go off with the Auctioneer. It's, it doesn't quite do anything this early, uh, as opposed to like if you can stick a minion somehow, which is going to be very difficult because Oscar had such a good start. Mm -hmm. But if you can stick a minion and Conceal that, then that's when you're really in the business because you can hit with cold blood twice, ideally. Is Kuso playing with um, uh, with the questioning adventurers? Uh, we're not sure. We haven't actually seen Sixo's rogue the entire weekend. Uh, okay. He just hasn't had to play it. It makes sense with um, with the barns as well, yeah, right? Yeah, it's really powerful off of barns. Um, so, and I just think it's overall the strongest build of rogue out there. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see that to because. Like, let's say one year ago, Questioning Adventure was the budget's choice yeah. for, for rogue decks when you didn't have an Edwin. Yep. Now you just play both. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a backstab. There are two coins and a prep. So this seems like a good turn to me. Yeah. I mean, if he can pick up Edwin, oh. it's going to be a really big Edwin. And if he can pick up Conceal, he can prep a Conceal. Oh, my God. That okay, let's see if he can draw an Edwin. That would probably just be game. Is uh, an Edwin? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. but like here, you kind of see why going off didn't do much. It draws him a bunch of cards, mm -hmm. but how relevant is that going to be? Well, he didn't go for the. Yeah. Oh, there's the conceal from the top of the deck. So good choice with that last spell, but two eviscerates are gone. Yeah. Are there, but I feel like in this matchup, in this particular matchup, eviscerates have, have even more value. Than in uh, in other games against Warrior because you can just use them as a finisher when your yeah. opponent already like made the board, hit hit uh, is hidden mm, 
behind the wall of Twin Emperors and then you just finish the phase for 10 with two eviscerates, right? Yeah, Twin Emperors is really important here. It's a very awkward card for Rogue to deal with. Yeah, they can sap the... Uh, the other one? The, yeah, the, <laughs> one that, the one that costs seven and has no effect. Yeah. Um, and that's a really effective answer. But besides that, I mean, that's waste a little bit of their mana. Uh, and the other one's still just a taunt that they have to get through. It's one of the ways you can live. He's going to pass it up, though, probably expecting that a sap is there. But still, sap is uh, not an idea. Yeah, I'm answer. still surprised. Like, right? I, I, hmm. I think Twin Emperor was fine there. Yeah, I agree. Um, he he might be digging towards Egg Pyromancer, Zick. but then but he, he used just used the command shot. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly interesting. Uh, it's going to be a struggle here for Askaka to survive. He's got no taunts, so that lets Sixo push the cold blood damage now. And he didn't go for the loot holder as well. And we do see Sixo drew a Violet Teacher, so probably not playing questings. Oh, they are, they are really good from quest, uh, sorry from Barnes as well. Yeah. But I would like to see the question adventures. It's right. uh, so insane with so, Barnes. So he's got 10 cards, so ideally he wants to play a minion this turn. That way, you know, if he doesn't just overdraw something. Mm -hmm. He gets pushed 12. And if he's he finishing for second at Conceal, right? Yeah, yeah. He just saw I mean, a commanding shout out of nothing. Yes. So having a second conceal basically wins well, the game. Obviously, uh, Raskak is digging for something. He did not have an answer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 6 0 knows conceal is just going to win if he can find it. No conceal for now. Well, he can still go for the. Um, actually, he can go for the end of now because he's overdraw. Yeah, by exactly. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, probably just SI and, you know, just Cure hit your 12. Yeah. I mean, he still has a full hand, so even if this gets cleared, it's not like he's in the worst shape. Mm -hmm. But really interesting is the fact that Oskaka didn't go for the uh, for the Twin Emperor. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it is a little weak to sap, which we didn't actually see mm -hmm. uh, 6 0 draw into, but uh, besides that, it is an awkward card for Rogue to deal with. It's still going to be awkward later, but for now, Oskaka is completely playing from behind. And uh, until he gets to turn 10 to drop Cthulhu, that's basically going to be the story of the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But 6-0's all out of damage now. Uh, and he it, used two Eviscerates. Yeah, he's used both Cold Bloods, both Eviscerates. The only damage he has left, really, is uh, that SI Agent, the Deadly Poison, and probably a Leroy. Um, what, once those are gone, it's all on these minions to push. And if Oskaka can find like a Pyromancer, not even sure he needs that, honestly. Uh, with Twin Emperor in the Cthune. Mm -hmm. He's probably, you know, 16 is pretty healthy for being hit by a 12 4 auctioneer. Yeah, exactly. Especially, in, uh, as you said, in this situation when the rogue has only, uh, only uh, red, uh, sorry, only cards that can, um, that have to wait a turn to deal yeah. the damage, right? So it's really awkward for Sixo to set up an attack because he needs, uh, what he needs for that is the second conceal. He doesn't have that many cards in the deck, though. It's like six. Um, I, yeah, it's very thin. I, I like the decision from Sixo here to just go in as much as possible. Um, yeah, he doesn't really need to conceal, I don't think. I mean, it it would make sure his stuff doesn't die, which now it is going to die. But he's got Oskaka down to 11, but no damage left in his deck. So... Unless he's playing the uh, Leroy Jenkins, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he has Leroy in his deck, very, very likely. But even that plus the dagger hit is only nine. So I, I feel like Oskaka is probably going to be able to stabilize here. So let's say he will use the Cooking Distance, kill every single 1-1, one, one, then you can execute the Violet Teacher, mm -hmm. and you can kill the Agent with the weapon. That leaves you with... I, I'd probably yeah, execute no? the SI agent as well. Uh, you, you really don't have a great chance to use it the rest of the game. You think so? You didn't see a single Azodrake yet? And You're just... Yeah, but you can die pretty easily if you if you leave yourself at 8. Uh, I guess you'd go up to 10 with the armor. Hmm. Okay. Because you really want to Cthune next turn, and if you, if you don't execute and you face tank the damage... Um, you go to 10, your opponent hits you down to 7, and then if you Cthune next turn, you're dead to Leroy, so... 
Oh, this can actually pull Leroy. Yeah, but it's 1-1. One, one. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, too bad. Pull that one. I mean, uh, pulling a Leroy from Barnes is actually pretty good because then you can play Cold Bloods on it. Yeah. And then you have just instant board control. And I mean, it's just one more damage, which is might end up being a huge deal in this match. Mm -hmm. Double saps. It's not really the best turn to get those. Yeah, sapping a Cthulhu is not very good. Yeah. So, Cthulhu is 10-10, uh, mistaken? I think it's really buff. It's either 12-12 or 14-14. Wait, there are two Disciples and at least and one Beckoner. Beckoner. Yeah, I think it's 12, which... It, it's not a guaranteed clear, but as long as it clears one of the four health targets, and you can face tank the other one... Now with the Pyromancer, does it make sense? Because you can deal... Mm. Oh, it is 14, actually. He's played all the Cthulhu buffers. Um, Okay. okay so you have to face tank three, but ten is still reasonable. It is reasonable. You can't well, really sap that. And you just I, set up lethal for next Yeah, game, right? the fact is Cthune is lethal is the big deal here. Yeah. Um, if Cthune wasn't representing lethal, Sixo if Sixo had time to just stealth an auctioneer and then he could double sap the, the twin emperors. But he's actually just dead to board, and sapping Cthune doesn't really do anything. Well, wait. If he saps Cthune, plays Violet Deesher, uh, he buys himself some time, because the Cthune doesn't kill him, most likely, yet. Yeah. He he definitely needs to sap Cthune, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he has no other play. Um, so, Violet Teacher, most likely. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, wait. The, the last card in the deck is Van Cleef. Uh, I, I guess he was probably hoping to hit the Van Cleef and go for Sap into Van Cleef. That would put 10 points of health on the board, and it's actually somewhat likely that some of it sticks around after the Okay, good point. Yeah. And uh, then Leroy would win you the game guaranteed, since it's the last card in his deck. So... Uh, well, uh, it's not guaranteed, right? Because your opponent can just play Twin Emperors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I mean, he actually has a clear on Twin Emperors with uh, Sap, Shadow Strike, Dagger it down. He doesn't even need the Dagger because of uh, the spell power. So it'll be interesting to see... It's one off lethal for us, Kaka. Mm -hmm. And there's the ancient. Uh, gaining speaker. 10 is probably the best here. Does uh, it plays around the sap? Kinda. It's really it interesting. You, you know all your opponent's cards for the most part. Um, you know they have another sap. An you know there's a Edwin. Which is basically useless. You know there's Edwin. You know there's Leroy. Mm -hmm. So, if you twin imp, you die. Um. I can gain 12 with the shelter. Cthune probably just wins you the game, unless your opponent has some unexpected source of damage that you don't account for, which Oskaka doesn't know the list. But um, if he did, Cthune is actually probably his highest percent win, win play here. Uh, second highest being just gaining 10. I 12, think. actually, right? Yeah, yeah, with the armor. Because 12 plays around Leroy. And yeah, you can even Blood to Icker here to play around the, the Shadow Strike and just create a 2-2. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't really see a way Sixo wins from here. Yeah. But it was still a good turn from Sixo the previous turn. Yeah. When actually, with the Astro Drake, it, makes a lot of, it made a yeah. lot of sense when you said that he still has the Edwin in the deck. Yep. He could have made a 4-4 and a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, and that would have actually been quite a problem for Oskaka. Wouldn't have been able to Cthulhu reliably, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Is there anything here? I mean, you uh, you probably have to sap the, <laughs> the <laughs> shield bearer. Oh, it feels bad. Even if you go with the sap, you build up the board with the violet teacher, your opponent still has a ghoul, still has a pyromance in the deck, and still has the cartoon that deals 14 damage, so... Yeah. Gotta play Edwin here, and maybe he'll just ignore the 2-2. Two -two. Makes sense. 6, 11, 15, 16 HP on minions. All right, so Cthulhu again is not lethal. Uh, that's a two damage. Per spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do... He has one spell in hand, guaranteed. That's a problem. So he wouldn't need to draw a second slam, an example. Uh, I'm not sure how many spells does he have left in this deck, so I don't feel it's reliable to actually go with the Pyromancers. Yeah. 
I mean, you could trim down the board to nine damage. You know that both saps were gone, but you didn't see the Shadow Strike yet. And yeah. most of the rogues are playing one Shadow Strike. You know there has to be one more Auctioneer, and there has to be a Leroy. So I, almost everything is, is being played. I actually think that the, the Wild Pyro, Wild Pyro Commanding Shout really just can't lose, right? Well, you have to de uh, you have to dig for a second spell. He right? doesn't actually need to draw a second spell. He would leave nine damage on the board. Then the uh, Leroy is fifteen, and the dagger is sixteen, and he'd be at eighteen. And then you know you just cthune the next turn. But uh, I think Askaka thinks that this is also just enough, and that's also true. Mm -hmm. uh, even with Shadow Strike, because it's seven, thirteen damage, fourteen damage with the dagger. Yeah. So now he's probably going to play the auctioneer as a four-four. And hope that this is a good enough team of minions to get there, which is almost certainly not the case. Yep. And he's on fatigue. Next, yeah. he's getting two damage. Yeah, I think Pyromancer, Pyromancer Commanding Shout will end the game. Hmm. Well, Fox 6 so seems like the case has to be play Auctioneer as a 4 4 minion, which would have been great against Priests, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Not really doing much in this situation. Yeah. I guess debating the trades here, um, if he should trade into anything, it saves your Van Cleef on board. So if he goes for Leroy, then he can go for the dagger. But yeah, the Leroy doesn't make much sense, I don't think. And uh, yeah, I think the real thing he was thinking about is if he needs to face, decides to go face, and Ross Kaka here. He can attack with the 2-1 into Auctioneer or into Azure Drake. Yeah, into Azure Drake would be, it would be slightly better since your opponent's in fatigue. Yeah. But um, you basically know the last card's Leroy, so any play here that beats Leroy... Um, He's at 11. Which, yeah, he goes to 13. He's actually... He's actually not that close. Let, let's say he goes for the double Pyromancer's commanding shouts. Right, he can so kill 12. Edwin, he can kill Azure Drake, he can kill the 1-1. One, one. He can just gain 10 this turn, though. He can just gain 12 and kill the Van Cleef. 12, that is 7, 8, 12, 18. So he will be at 21. So that's yeah. two off. Yeah, he can just he can just gain 12 here. Katoon is 14 damage. Does it make sense to play Katoon? No. No. No, I mean, you can always play Katoon next turn. No card kills you here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Zero cards in, in the rope deck kill you here. So at worst, you can just play Katoon next turn. Uh, and when your opponent's at five life, so it's even more likely to kill them. Now your opponent is, you know, facing down lethal with uh, the shield bearer. So it has to be essentially Leroy into the shield bearer, mm -hmm. clean up the one one somehow, and then yeah, pretty much die to Cthulhu. Yeah. Though it would have been still interesting to see the. Double Pyromancer commanding shout, clear. If you yeah, would have a second I, spell, that would have been the definite GG, right? Yeah, this game was was really interesting because so Oscar doesn't have the, the full list, but you can you can definitely kinda like rationalize out what your opponent could still have if you you know, whether you have a good memory or you've been taking notes. Uh, which I don't think Oscock has been taking notes, but you know, if you can remember what all has been used, you should. This is basically a solved game at some point for Oscock, <laughs> where every turn he should have known exactly how much damage Sixo had. He should have known what he needed to do, uh, and if he needed to take a risk with like the Pyromancer, Pyromancer commanding shout and try to draw a spell, which would have failed, as as we can see, like he yeah. didn't draw any spells. So each turn he just took the safest line and still no spell. I believe. It's it's lethal, I think. Well, it's he will get three damage from fatigue. Yeah. So it's five, nine, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen. It's it's gonna end the game somehow. So now you clear in the game. Yep. Well, that was an interesting game. Really well played by both Sixo and Oskaka. I feel like there's one thing that maybe Oskaka should have done differently, and what that was the ten seven Emperor. Yeah, I mean. He did end up getting down the Emperor after both saps had been used. I mean, his game plan definitely worked out. Like, he he got his Cthulhu sapped. <laughs> and then he got his Shield Bearer sapped. So. Yeah, those are good saps for him. Yeah. Um, from Sixos end, I mean, I, I can't recall off the top of my head anything that he could have really done differently. He he definitely took some risk in the game where it was, it was like, getting the Van Cleef off of the Azure Drake was just a straight 50-50 that he missed. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the Barnes into Van Cleef was, was slightly bad. He got, you know, could have gotten Leroy, could have gotten mm-hmm. something better. Um, the only thing really to look at for 6-0 is maybe the he turn that he... Rates. Well, I think the first eviscerate was definitely fine. Um, honestly, the turn where he just auctioneered and, and went all in, uh, knowing now that he doesn't have questing adventures, it makes much more sense, but... Uh, all it really did was push that 12 damage uh, and draw a bunch of cards. Mid-game war is but not that important, he right? He was so close. So yeah. maybe, like, from his point of view, I mean, Oskaka did have a really good draw. Uh, he had the Cthulhu on curve. That's he true. Had the, he had the Shield Bear. He had the Twin Emperors. The only thing he, re- he was really lacking was a big Pyromancer clear. But look at that. Xixo has a really explosive start with Innovate and Double Wild Groves, but he is missing minions to put any threats on board. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a matchup where you do want to pressure with minions. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you just kind of go blow for blow with Cthulhu Warrior, they're you're probably going to do really well against you. Yeah, you, you're going to get outvalued, right? And that's that's problematic. So Feral Rage to clean up the Acolyte of Pain. You want to keep the swipe for... Yeah, for... Emperor. Post-commanding shout, basically. Yes, exactly. Um, or just clear up Emperor or anything with 5 HP, right? Sure. For the Barnes as well. Yeah, I mean, it's... You know, there, there's a case to be made for each, but I think swipe is just a better card in the matchup later on. No. Just going to ignore it for and now. Oh, the Acolyte of Pen, which is interesting because you know that your opponent's deck yeah. tries to well, live off Acolyte right. of Pain, and, right? And when they coin out an Acolyte of Pain... That means he has something he has to something. go on top of sure. it, right? Interesting choice. Especially since uh, Xixo is lacking any kind of follow-up after that second wild growth, right? Yeah, I mean, Nourish is about the best he has. But he would have been able to play the Nourish anyway. Yeah. He doesn't really... There wasn't much merit to to wild growthing besides just, you know, getting it down for future turns. Now, he is playing... Uh, the Malagos, Malagos Druid, yeah. Oh, here so, we go. I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, how that really changes your Cthulhu matchup. Uh, Askok has to be a little worried about potentially just dying out of nowhere, but... Obviously, when you're at 32 and above, you're fine. Well, you can plan this game to just go a different way than the previous one, right? Because you can be more defensive, you can just put more more hero powers, um, more, you can just use hero power more frequently, and you just plan to go with Bran and Shilber at some point to put 20 life uh, to, your, uh, to your hero, right? Yeah, Askaka's cycling really hard because he needs the Cthulhu buffers. Uh, he's got the Cthulhu cards and Cthulhu, but he really needs to find Disciple and uh, Beckoner just to get that all online before turn 10. So went with the most aggressive card draw option he had. It's actually a huge difference between the mana. Look at that. Warriors at 4, and now <laughs> Druid is at 7. I mean, Warrior would go to 5, but still, there's a huge difference. Yeah, just Druid things. Mm-hmm. And still, he has more cards. Actually, sorry, the same amount of cards. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the minions on board and the Acolyte draw, so kind of ahead in, in card economy. My keeper to <laughs> actually go... Ramped? <laughs> to, I don't know why. He's just going for mana. Um, yeah. maybe, maybe he's just going to go for either an Auctioneer turn or... I mean, he has a lot of options, right? He could slam down Malgos if he's feeling really bold, like he just... You think that's viable against a no, warrior? No, not really. Yeah, right? You but uh, get it, executed and GG. Yeah, it, it really depends on where you think you're at in the game. Obviously, uh, Six was behind, I would say, uh, since Oskaka's just, you know, Six was ramped a lot, but what now he has to do something with it. True. True, and uh, his um, his threats are not really that play uh, that playable on it on their own, right? Yeah. Alkin Giant for nine mana, not really convincing. You want to get them for at least four yeah. or, or even less. Uh, while Maligos has to be comboed, so your only option is to play Auctioneer with the Interface to start start cycling to get that Moonfires, and so they can be either comboed with the Catstand or with Maligos. So it's kind of awkward for him. 
But it seems like uh, Ostkaka is actually pulling some weight here. He has the disciple, he just needs a second activator uh, to play with the twin emperors and try to just play Katoon into Doomcaller. Alright, so yeah, Sixo's plan was to just get extra mana for this auctioneer turn. And that does use up one of his innervates. Ooh, does a second. The other one. Yeah. Okay, that's something. But he doesn't have a. Well, he can go innervate Feral Rage. Does he want to? Uh, oh, okay. That solves a, pr a small problem because now we can use Living Roots for two damage. But you have to remember that Living Roots is actually a card that can be played for zero mana after your Emperor with Malagos. Mm -hmm. So that's seven damage burst. It's actually a huge thing because not. It not only is a good finisher, but also can just kill one of the uh, parts of the Emperor. Yep, and since he did not remove the slime, Oskaka has the option to just Emperor and still clear that Auctioneer. Have to see if he goes for that, or if he really doesn't care about the discounts and he just wants to clear. Still no way to activate Twin Emperors or buff up Cthulhu much. Oh, he goes for the 10-6 Emperor, so most likely it will die. It leaves him intimidated with the fact that someone can have a swipe with the Acid Drake and just kill it yeah. outright. Yep, oh my god! What a turn! Emperor for an Emperor, but this goes with hand-to-hand -hand with a swipe for 5 damage. Yeah, and honestly, if Oskaka has to use Execute to deal with these, um, he's not going to really have much to deal with Arcane Giants and Malagos and Yogg-Saron. Like, mm -hmm. Sixo started with no minions, and he kind of just compiled all of the, the strongest minions threats, in his deck. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you have two damage from the Ghouls, additional two damage from the Disciple, and one additional damage from uh, the Blood to Iker. That's not enough to kill every single threat. Yeah. With just those. But it helps. Right. Probably has to use one execute. Um, the play I see is like Acolyte, Ghoul, um, Disciple, or Blood Daker, the 4 4, Disciple it, that kills it, and then execute the uh, 5 4 Emperor that's left over. Gonna choose not to play the Acolyte though, which. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like he, he could have he could have just drawn the card off that Acolyte and gotten it into play, but I guess. Valuing the armor, um, it's you know armor is good, but in increments of two, I feel like it's more important to get to the Cthulhu buffers and maybe yeah. the Ancient Shield Bearer to gain ten armor. Exactly what I wanted to say, because uh, that brings more value than just hero powering for two mana, right? Yeah, if you just play scared of, of the Malagos combo all the time, I mean it, it's going to kill you eventually. Uh, yeah. It's it's at its most likely point right now that Sixo wouldn't be able to kill you when you're at 19. So I would have liked to see him just cycle more aggressively, like he was earlier. Another innervate. Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely sick, the right? pick. Yeah. Savage has no merit here in this deck. Another innervate allows you to maybe play a swipe alongside the Malagos. Which is insane then, <laughs> because it deals 7 damage to the entire board. Well... It's already 6 damage. 6 so has a lot of damage. Um, Probably just we'll, we'll just go for the double giants, right? This turn in my keeper. No, sorry, that's not enough. Uh, he can go for the inner. Go for his double giants. Yep, he's gonna actually just go all in, deal eight, get both eight eights down, and he's threatening fourteen from hand next turn. And he has eight attack. Well, fifteen from hand because of the uh, the. Hero power, so yeah, this is this is a lot of damage. It's it's lethal if Oskaka does not taunt or play shield bearer, um, and he has neither of those options unless he wants to just play the the twin emperor out. So good spot from Sixo to realize that getting the feral rages in right now let him uh, set up the lethal for next turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for Oskaka, there's a way to clear. Uh, both giants. Yep. The, the disciples. You know, it seems like a great pickup to him because now he can clear both. Uh, but I mean, can he? Yeah, he still could anyway. both with a, with a sure. disciple. But he needs to armor up. 
in his eyes. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's definitely almost certainly going to armor up, especially because he's seen both innervates. Um, so in his mind, you know, Mal he would need Malagos in three spells, but since Sixo picked up Innervate off of the Raven Idol, uh, he only needs the two living roots. Well, seems like the Malagos will be slammed down. And now we have a follow up of double living roots for 14 damage. And a hero power. Well, that was a quick game. Although I did, wasn't really predicting as a quick game at all. Two yeah. slow decks, right? Playing against each other. Well, Sexo, I mean, he really aggressively just went to get to his threats. I mean, even if that game kind of dragged out, I, I think Sexo was probably still fine. I mean, Execute's gone. You've got Yogg, you have Malagos. Uh, things, I mean, maybe that matchup's just pretty good for the Druid, but of course, Sexo chose to go with Rogue first. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how great it could be in Sexo's eyes. It is. It looks like it is okay, but let's um, let's take into consideration the fact that he actually drew his four biggest threats in yeah. the entire deck in the first twelve cards. Yeah, I mean, well, he drew a lot because of the uh, the big auctioneer turn, but it was like four spells. It wasn't really that big. It was two inner eights. Uh, yeah, it might have been like four or five. Because then he used after the innovate, he used just as a Drake. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, <laughs> sounds funny, right? But still, four cards from just one. <laughs> only okay. four. Yeah, only four. <laughs> well, we have the Druid Showdown. And uh, Askaka said before this match, he is definitely going to Barnes Yashard in the Ysera. He called his shot. Okay. Let's see if it will happen. A Moonfire from Raven Idol, which is amazing in, <laughs> in this particular deck. In, other, yeah. in any other Druid, you will not want to pick it, unless you want to go off with a, a Violet Teacher, for example, for additional power of the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you, when you play so much spell power in your deck, you probably want to pick it. So, so far, I have seen from Oskaka twice an Ancient of War from that Barnes. Yeah. So let's see what will happen this time. Yep, he whiffed on the wild growth and innervate, so it's it's a slow start, definitely. Uh, I'm not too sure how these two druid decks line up overall. I mean, they're definitely more uncommon builds. Correct. And Sixo, well, his hand doesn't look great. Uh, I mean, Askaka probably, yeah, he probably just ramps here. He, he has two six drops that are really valuable to get on to get online as early as possible. And also you don't want to just give your opponent a chance to kill the um, the token from Barnes without uh, sacrificing two mana f with his hero power. Yeah. You will see a Cyclone Wrath, which is important because you're lacking any threats in your hand. You would probably want to go for the Gazette. Uh, Ga Gaz oh my god, I can't really pronounce that. <laughs> uh, from, from the Auctioneer, because you have a hand that is perfect for cycling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 6-0, like you said, really wants to take gadgets and it's definitely priority on his mind. Hmm. Well, Sylvanas doesn't really look like, like a good follow-up in the coin turn because of the fact that your opponent has exactly five attack yeah. board with two minions. So most likely the can will go down because it's, it's a permanent threat on your opponent's board. It can be silenced. There's no saps. There's no way of stealing the tempo from from uh, your turn. So seems like a solid choice here. And the follow up, you can't really predict what you, what you want to follow up with. So I feel like it's a so safe choice to just play the Cairn. Yeah, I think it's either Cairn or Barnes here. And like you said, Cairn uses all your mana as efficiently as possible. There's really nothing in Six of Tech that counters it. So what will Nourish bring? Where's the auctioneer? Oh, oh, here we go. Well, it was now it looks awesome. It was feeling like Rogue for a second there, where it's like, you know, you've got all the cards in the world, but no auctioneer to pair it with. So now that's what will happen for Oskaka. Next turn is basically just going to be ridiculousness. Yep. So how much mana does he have? Three yeah. additional mana, so he has 11, 11 mana, so he can use five. Oh my god. Spells. Okay, third time in a row. He hit Ancient War. 
again. Yep. So I feel like I'm kind of bringing this this um, luck, quote unquote, for Skaka when I'm casting because yeah. it's happened for a time. Well, if you're going auctioneer, you probably start ASAP. Yep. Yep. This will take a long, long time. Yeah, he even has like a Raven Idol choice to make, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that, the second one. Unless he just wants to just swipe. Well, even then, you could still fit in the Raven Idol. So a lot to think about here. So if you want to go... Because you have the second auction here, I feel like you might not use the... Um, the Living Roots and Moonfire at all. Because you can still cycle in the upcoming turn, and if you get to the Emperor... Your hand is super burst. It's like insane amount of burst, right? Yeah. Interesting to note that if Sixo plays Raven Idol, uh, he will overdraw next turn. So okay. it's sort of like, you know, you don't get the auctioneer effect, but you still get to Raven Idol. It's not only, it's not only that, but it can also burn Amalagos. Yeah, yeah, that would be disastrous. disastrous. Aviana, no innervate in hand. Yeah, I mean, at least you, at least you can kill auctioneer. So that's the consolidation prize here. Probably just rag this turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, if it hits face, your opponent's a nine. Could swipe hero power, wild growth, and go for like an Aviana plus rag next turn. Get to swing face, take six o down to twelve. Yeah, he's gonna go for that instead. Okay. But it doesn't set up lethal, right? I mean, no, uh, if, if with a rag shot a, hit, it would. If your opponent uses the hero power, does it, then it doesn't. Well, you can just hero power them if you want. Oh yeah, right, because you don't have, need to play Aviana. What yeah. I'm about. I was just so tunnel vision on the awesomeness <laughs> yeah. of Aviana with Ragnaros, right? Well, Sixo has a lot of armor gain in hand with the double feral rage. But will he use it? That's the thing. You gotta be feeling a little under pressure here with your opponent attacking face so aggressively. I mean, Askaka chose to to hit face like not last turn, but the turn before that he chose to decline a trade. Mm -hmm. So Feral Rage for gain eight life, and that's about it. Unless you want to go for the Moonfire draw. Well, Auctioneer Wild Growth is usually nice, but. He's got nine cards in hand, and he's only on nine mana, so... So, nothing worked? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just gonna gain eight life. Ah, oh, too bad. He can't really combo that uh, giant this turn. He goes for the cycle, because he's really in dire need of something. And that something would be... He's not playing any taunts, right? Uh, don't think so. Hmm. Well, it can take the auctioneer to your side and just bolt your savannas. I think Aviana Rag's pretty solid. Yeah. And Sixo's deck does not have a great way of dealing with any of this. Uh, and Oskaka has a mulch to back this up to make sure Rag can hit face more accurately. Wow. Okay. This doesn't look good at all. Yeah, I mean... Well, you go for the Raven Idol. You either get ne neutralized or mulch for the drag, but still, there's an Aviana and a 4 5 a Yeti basically. So, then you need to use the swipe to kill Aviana. There's a naturalize. Yeah. So that's something. It's an out. Yeah. Quite a bit worse than mulch, I would say, since Haskaka's deck is just loaded with good minions. Mm hmm. And so, if you go for the Azure Drake. Uh, you can use Living Roots and Wrath, no, that doesn't change anything. So you can play the Giant this turn as well. Yeah. Wrath for one to cycle, right? So... Yeah. Yeah, I guess he's... Okay, it's not terrible. It doesn't look terrible, because now Neutralize will also deal with the Rag and... Well, you have to play Neutralize, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and six are roped. He didn't have enough time. It's not a huge deal, though. As long as he got the wild growth off, it, mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to have the excess mana to play next turn. It's fine. True. 
And he used two innervates, right? So it didn't make any difference for any other actions. Um, I th think he's only used one. Well, but, but he had nothing to innervate out, so. Mm -hmm. But he should have started with with the wild growth, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it was a tough turn to really see what you were going to try and do there. With nine cards in hand, you're getting multiple new options with Raven Idol, with Wrath, maybe, with, with the Wild Growth. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, in hindsight, it would have been better to start with the Wild Growth. Maybe it changes your play, but... I can't really stress enough how awesome Discovery is as a mechanic. It just brings such a new level to the game, right? Because you need to... Yeah, you just think discover the best option for what you need. You just hit naturalize every time. <laughs> Great mechanic. You don't like it? No, I actually do like discover. I think everybody's kind of in favor. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's skillful RNG essentially. You know, you have, yeah. you have kind of deterministic uh, luck in what you know you're going to be getting into. Okay, let's see that. Let's see if there will be the turn for Yog or. Okay. Well, it's kind of sad to play Yogg into Sylvanas, right? Yeah, and, and he can wait on the Yogg because he could just gain some, some life this turn. So Emperor into oh, Forage. Oh, oh my god, he's going for the Yogg. Call of the Wild. It's a good start. Yep. Oh. Uh, that just kills him right. pretty much. That is seven cards, right? It, only six. Six, six but it... Uh... And it's, it's 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 not pretty. <laughs> Shadow steps. If only that would happen in a different <laughs> in a different uh. order. Oh, there's additional damage to his face. Nope. Holy fire. He heals for five, but that's about it. Uh, and he's not into uh, fatigue. He, he has a torch in his deck. He burned the innervate. Yeah. So he can't, like, Malagos Innervate Torch, but... But he has Emperor in his hand. Uh, that's a lot of damage. And there are two secrets, and we have no idea what are those. Yeah, no clue. It's one Hunter secret, and I, I think the second one is mage. O's, is mage, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh. it was Mage and Hunter. So let's say if it's Mirror Entity, that would be a huge deal. Yeah, I mean, because Azkaka has to taunt, because he knows that the last card is a Roaring Torch. <laughs> So it's like he's thinking if he wants to wild growth, if he even wants to hero power. I mean, it's it's a hunter secret. It could be dart trap. So we got the the info. It's mirror entity and snipe. Yep. So he's gonna play on mirror entity, and it was luckily for six in the right order, uh, since it was random. But if it's in the other order, you get the three one instead. Yep. I and learned I, the hard I, way I, when I keepered something. I think that's just game. Yeah, e even without the torch, uh, but plenty of overkill. Sixo was a 50-50 away from totally holy firing himself and losing. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. actually really, really close. Yeah, I. I, I guess. Um, I Yog questioned using the Yog that turn, and I still think it was probably wrong, because I feel like had he just kind of stayed alive and cycled to the end of his deck. Mm -hmm. We saw his deck was able to win the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, he, so didn't, he didn't need he didn't anything need else. The roaring right? yeah, he, exactly. he needed the holy fire damage. So there was an extra five damage that Yogg got in. But but it, at the same time, he well, had the innervate in his yeah, deck. Yeah, he had still, innervate in his right? deck. And if, I mean, maybe wouldn't have enough time to draw to that. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a bold choice to just Yogg when your opponent is a Sylv out. Uh, and it ended up paying off. Because this is the first time I actually see this exact deck, Arcan Giant Malagos, pair against a Freeze Mage. I have no clue, no experience in this matchup yet, <laughs> so I can only fear that it, Same. Like, it's like, oh my god, how do you even play this game, right? I mean, I think that the, the Arcan Giants are pretty okay against Freeze Mage, like compared to what they replace, which is like Cenarius and Anixia. I feel like they're they're just better because they come in as, as really cheap 8-8s eight rather mm -hmm. than always being 9 mana. The uh, only better 8-8 eight, eight than Arcan Giants here would be a Ragnaros. Ragnaros yeah. Right? So, uh, and Xixo is not playing the Ragnaros in this deck at all. So that's a threat that is not being present. But still, you can... 
can easily deal the exact damage to keep uh, to, to leave the mage at one HP and finish him off with an attack from the hero power. But it's all about the timing. If, if the if the mage will just be faster with the Alexstrasza, yeah, then he just has the better combo. But at the same time, we play double Feral Rages. Yeah, there's two Feral Rage in this stack, and that means that Askaka can't really just go for a kill you plan very confidently. I mean, maybe that's what his hand dictates he needs to do, but he's not going to feel good about that because even post Alexstrasza, if your opponent gains even just eight, it becomes so much more difficult to kill them. But if 6-0 has both Feral Rages and gains 16 life, that is insane. Mm -hmm. Correct. No rage on turn three, why not? Okay, so let's say the Emperor can be played on next turn and it will actually gain a lot of value. The Auctioneer for five mana, two spells for zero mana and two spells for one mana is actually guarantee uh, four cycle on turn seven. Sorry, on yeah. turn actually four. But uh, four? Five. On turn five you can actually get four cycles with the Auctioneer, yeah. which is insane, right? I mean... Even better is the fact that Sixo's Emperor Thorson is basically going to deny Askaka from coining out his own. Uh, he'll, he'll have to answer that, I think. Um, but wait, if Sixo will go for that auctioneer, then he can't really cycle with the uh, li uh, with the Raven Idols because that makes your hand full. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to uh, be careful about overdrawing. But he has been very aware of that in the mm -hmm. past two games. Uh, I doubt we're going to see him slip up. But you never know. I mean, auctioneer turns can get pretty hairy sometimes. It's one of the options for Ostkaka. You would They're like bad. to kill that as soon as possible. Yeah, he probably just has to frostbolt ping it. He, he could. Don't you like the fireball more? Fireball's more damage, uh, and he has the other frostbolt to proc the ice lance anyway. So I think I like going with this. It's a. It's. Let you get down the Doomsayer, which is a big deal. It's going to let Askaka get into a clean Emperor Thorson turn. But I mean, the fact that Sixo drew so many cards, reduced them, and Askaka really, the only thing he's really accomplished is getting down an ice block. It's, it's not looking good for Askaka. I mean. Yeah, and his cycle options are limited to just one novice engineer. Yep, Sixo is very reliably, I think, going to draw into the Feral Rages this game, unless they're like in his bottom five cards. Which can still happen and sure. go to the point where you just draw the entire deck. Yeah, I mean, we saw Sixo draw his deck last game. So, and that was against a faster deck than Freeze Mage. Mm -hmm. Nourish, gain additional two mana, so now he's four mana ahead. Which is a huge deal as well. Common theme. Yeah. So now he has three, six, and eight, nine cards in hand. Hmm. Well. Doesn't still seem like a turn for an auctioneer. Probably just an Azodrake into swipe to deal with the Emperor. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Wild Grove for cycling and making the Arcan Giant cheaper. He could hold on to the excess mana if you really wanted uh, the auctioneer draw. I don't think so when you have two yeah, Raven yeah, Idols. Yeah, he has too many cards. Yeah. Oh, there's the first Feral Rage, which is, which is crucial in this matchup, as mentioned. So, really good pickup to have it already in hand so you're more aware what are your options uh, post Alexstrasza. Yeah. And Askaka probably... Well, now that he drew the Acolyte, he could go Acolyte and ping it just to get some cycle. But besides that, I mean, Torch Ping is looking like the way to clear this Drake if you want to clear it. There might come a time where Askaka realizes he needs to use every point of burn on Sixo's face. Uh, because Askaka's not running Pyroblast, mm -hmm. uh, as we've seen in his previous matches. And with two Feral Rages and two Raven Idols in your opponent's deck, you have to be very conscious of how much damage you can actually deal and be sure not to overuse it on minions. Correct. I mean, it's looking really bleak for Skaka. What do you feel about uh, how do you feel about the mirror images in current Freeze Mages build? Um, it's definitely better against like some of the more aggressive decks. It's 
it's good if you're going to be leaving Shaman unbanned, which Askaka is against players that have Warrior. Um, but Sixo doesn't have Warrior, so he did end up banning Shaman. But it can be an important card to just kind of stay alive at a cheap mana cost. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> was that a Raven Idol to Raven Idol? Yeah, yep. it was. Okay. Probably looking for Swipe. Another Feral Rage! Third Feral Rage. I mean, healing that would have been good as well, right? Sure. But if you have Fandral on board, then Feral Rage is kind of better. Yeah. I mean, this this game looks very clean cut for 6-0. It, it might you know what take is, a while, but... You know what's even more important? Um, just the fact that you can play Feral Rage before Alexstrasza. Because you get armor instead of heal. So you have yeah. actually preemptive. Yeah. Okay. Is oh, actually dealing the full damage of the Azure Drake is also significant. My god. Yeah, and now pressure is also there, so Askaka needs to deal with. He doesn't have the damage to win the game. He doesn't have the time to stall the game. He has Frost Nova, but he has no way of killing those 8 8 minions. And this looks very problematic. Pinging those that makes no sense as, at all. For Xixo, it's kind of it's kind of awkward right now because he can't really play anything on board again, right? Because you don't want to kind of overextend. At the same time, you want to play, as I said, preemptively for our rages. So it seems fine to just get the cycle going. Yep, and it's uh, important that Sixo played the non-Raven Idol one. Uh, keep that information concealed from Askaka. Yeah. Maybe he thinks he can kill you now. Wait, and he actually all used in. that. He actually used the one. No, no, he used the the non-Raven Idol. You one. sure? It yeah. was from the left side, not from the right side. Yeah. Okay, because I was sure there was a feral rage on the right side of the yog. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Six damage to the dome. Doesn't really make a difference for the Druid, he's still above 30. Yeah, Askaka's just hoping to draw Alex the next turn and somehow miraculously win the game. Oh, there's another Feral Rage. So this looks bleak for Askaka. Now it looks kind of like a warrior matchup. <laughs> I mean, by the end of this game, if it goes that long, he will have gained over 30 life. So, yeah. We're, we're getting into warrior status now. My god, 19 armor. Where's the savagery now? 20! <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean... How do you deal with that? <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, look, 8 armor. Neat. Ooh, and he, <laughs> he didn't even hit Blizzard. Yeah, he's just gonna scoop wow. it up. Wow, what a game. Actually, sweeping with Malago's Druid. Reverse sweep. Yeah. That is the third viable build, right, of the Druid that we see in this tournament that is capable yeah. of winning an entire match. Entire match. Raven, what do you have to say? That was just crazy overall, right? Like, it looked like Askaka pretty much had it, you know, had yeah. it done towards the end. His warrior got the win against the Paladin, which I'm sure you were relieved at after giving yeah. the advice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just a crazy set overall. But, uh, you know, just to sort of mirror what you said, Lothar, having on yet another Druid deck that's, you know, very similar to in aspects of the, like, token Druid, but really mm -hmm. focused on the draw and the Maligos. So just great to see a deck, or at least a class that everyone maybe initially thought there was only one true build of in general, just really be extended out. But we can actually look at the bracket now as we have our finals. It is going to be Ecop versus six so but a hell of a finals going on there we can see German the finals man yeah and look at the journey they've taken ecop taking down Vins and fire on his way and then six so going through the previous uh, true silver champion Ness and then going through the current world champion Oskaka so you'd have to say six so had the uh, the harder run through the bracket on paper of course but good uh, good effort from both of them so far and we will be going to ecop versus six so after we have the Redemption Cup Correct. finals after. But I can't really wait for that final between those two fan favorites. Exactly. Yeah, really. It's going to be fantastic, guys, but just don't go anywhere. We'll go into a short break while we set up the next match. Stick around.